I think for me, this is in probably my top three spellcasting classes. So I actually had to re-record this one three times total because of problems. It didn't record audio. And so, uh, yeah, here I am, third attempt. Hope this one works. What's up, guys? I'm back again with another class breakdown from the Convergence mod. This is for the Stormcaller. Let's get into it. So the class uses sorcery and it uses physical damage. And obviously it focuses on air. It's kind of like an airbender, right? Casting tornadoes and gusts of wind and all that stuff. The interesting parts about the class are that it's um, not the highest damage and that it's not the most mana efficient, but it is probably the best class at dealing poise damage and uh, breaking posture. That's definitely its focus. Is It's designed around the concept of causing big staggers and poise breaks. So it, it also works very well if you're trying to build like a, a critical style build where you're trying to break their posture and then stab them with a dagger or whatever it might be. It has a theme somewhat centered on, it has long range projectiles, so it can deal damage at range, um, but it definitely is more effective the closer the enemy is because it has a lot of like whirlwind, tornado, cyclone effects that kind of want to be relatively close to where the player is. It's not really that the, you know, sometimes the damage does ramp up the closer something gets, but really it's the stagger damage that ramps up hugely when something gets close so that you're able to generate the control that come from getting staggers. The Stormcaller is one of the sorcery-focused classes that uh, scales with Int and Faith together. And all the weapons that are Storm scaling will go all the way up to 99 of each stat, whereas the spellcasting tools will go to 50-50. So we've done this with all the dual stat scaling spell types. Okay, so let's start with the spells. So the first spell in the toolkit is Storm Gust. So it's a pretty fast cast. Range is not so fast. It's definitely, I'm sorry, the range is not so far. Um, there's definitely some spells that go further. But it also has a full charge, which will give you slightly more range and slightly more damage, uh, you know, at the cost of a little bit of speed. But still very spammable. Definitely a good introductory spell. Very mana efficient. One of the most mana efficient spells that you'll see with this particular class. Great spell. Uh, next we have Rebuff. Rebuff is kind of designed to keep enemies away from you. Like, uh, if you're getting surrounded, it'll knock enemies away. Um, it'll also break shields really easily. Just knock them down. Damage not so great, but that's sort of not the point. Definitely not a bad spell, but also one that kind of outlives its usefulness in favor of other options that will deal damage and also cause staggers but definitely decent for early game. Up next, we have Storm Armament. So Storm Armament is literally just a, a weapon buff that increases the physical damage of the weapon. It doesn't add any extra poise damage like Cragblade does. It's just a straight up physical damage buff um, because Cragblade's sort of filling that role of like poise increasing. So we didn't really bother uh, placing that effect on Storm Armament because there wasn't really a pure physical damage buff spell in the game. And so it sort of filled a unique role. Air Tax. So in all patches up until now, air tax is basically just a, uh, a debuff for the enemy, where you put a curse on them and it makes them deal less damage and also makes them more susceptible to their like shield getting broken, less effective at guarding. But for the upcoming patch, for 1.4, we felt that this is not actually like powerful or attractive enough for most people to choose, so we've actually made it a little bit better, where on top of those previous effects, we've also made it so that now it deals damage over time. And so it's basically just a dot now. Um, with those same weakness debuffs. So it'll be a lot more attractive to use, just as a great utility spell and help with survivability, in particular on bosses, because that's really where you're focusing on one target that has the potential to deal damage to you. Whereas, obviously, air attacks is going to be pretty weak when you're fighting groups, because trying to uh, reduce the damage of everyone in a group is trickier to do. But yeah, here it is in action, the new version. We've also made the visual effect on it a little bit more obvious so that you can see when something is affected by it. So definitely not, not a bad spell. Should actually see some use now. <laughs> Whereas before I feel like it was a little bit um, just too niche to really see a lot of use. Up next we have Twister. This is basically um, Godric's mini tornado that he shoots along the ground. Um, Twister's a really interesting spell because it does pretty decent damage. But the really interesting thing about it to me is that because it tracks very well and it stays along the ground, it's actually possible, especially in small boxy rooms, 
for Twister to hit an enemy and then curve back along the walls and come back and hit the enemy again. So if you're fighting a boss in close quarters, it's actually kind of great because it has the opportunity to hit something twice. Whereas a lot of spells, you know, you hit something once and then that's it. So Twister's interesting. It's fairly unique in that regard. Uh, in terms of damage, it's decent, but I wouldn't say fantastic. So, and But, you know, it's very, very fast to cast, so can't really argue with that. Up next, we have Stormark. This is your first very long-range spell, and it's uh, essentially, for those who played the DS3 version of Convergence, uh, it's what Airblade was, allowing you to do uh, damage from a very long way away uh, with an air projectile. And uh, you, it can be chained by, by tapping it over and over making it slightly more useful, but definitely really good for sniping, um, kind of your first long-range option. Up next we have Whirlwind. Now Whirlwind is sort of your first extremely powerful close-range spell. So there's a, it, it's a spell that has a pretty significant difference between the uh, non-full charge and then the full charge version. Because of how long the Whirlwind lasts on the full charge version, the amount of damage you get out of it is quite high. Um, it's kind of crazy strong, the uh, the full charge version that is. So like I walk up to this guy, hit him with a regular one, and he is able to block out all of it. But then if I do this, he can't. <laughs> the full charge version of Whirlwind is, um, to me, it's one of my favorite spells for the class. I think it's it's really great. It can clear whole rooms. Um, it also has the feature like a lot of storm sorceries have, which is it'll pull things in toward the center of it, right? Like there's a lot of type of spells, like some gravity and some other ones that they're like explosions and they knock enemies away. But there's a lot of um, wind spells that actually pull enemies in and sort of keep them there in the sort of tornado effects, which is really fun. All right, next is storm call. Storm call is basically honed bolt, but it's for Storm Sorcery. Just calls down a storm. A quick little burst of air. Damage on it is quite good, but the cost is a little bit on the high side because it is such such a, a spell built to spam so much. Still very effective in the right situation in the same way that Hone Bolt can, uh, can be. All right, next is Cloud Form. Definitely one of the more unique spells of the class. It allows you to sprint without holding the B button. So I'm just hitting the directional stick. And it also, while sprinting, you don't use stamina. But it has some extra features. I can be running and casting without stopping. Which makes it extremely fun. It's kind of game-changing the way that this works. It definitely makes the game feel like a different game to a certain degree. The other thing you can do is you can drink, uh, you can drink flasks while running. You can do all kinds of actions while running and not using stamina. It's it's really fun. It's it's really cool to use, but it definitely has some downsides. It is harder to aim while you're sprinting. If you do generate a stagger, it's harder to repost while sprinting because in order to repost, you cannot be running. You have to be either walking or stopped. So if you're going to generate a critical on something, then you need to actually stop when cloud form is on because you, you're incapable of walking. You can only sprint or stop. <laughs> Uh, so that's actually kind of a little nuance that some people don't get used to right off the bat. Still really fun spell, really fun to use. Let's see, up next we have Storm Strike. Storm Strike is sort of the first very powerful projectile you pick up. It's definitely a pure upgrade from Storm Gust. It casts using the Comet animation, which means it's chainable and full chargeable. Um, it shoots out a projectile that then ends with a small tornado at the end of it. And then the full charge version is more damage, and the tornado lasts a little bit longer at the end. Um, great spell. Definitely a bread and butter style spell for the class. One of those ones that becomes, I think, your primary DPS after you pick it up. So, really good. Up next, we have Gale Blast. So, Gale Blast is sort of the first spell that you're given, aside from maybe rebuff, that's really not designed to do damage. Um, it's designed to break poise. And so, you can cast it... And you can see the damage is quite small, but then he is he is poise broken from it. So this will poise break most enemies, including bosses, before the duration of a full charge on it is done. Also, while the sort of cone of air is shooting out, it will follow enemies around. If they move left or right, it will try to swivel and 
shoot them. Uh, enemies can actually beat this by moving through the projectile, like directly, and then I don't think it has the capability to turn 180 degrees, but it will. S it's, it's still pretty good at tracking enemies in most situations. This is sort of like the first spell that introduces you to this idea of your trading damage for stagger. And there's more later that sort of build up on this theme. Okay, up next we have a buff called Gathering Storm. Gathering Storm is, um, I really like it. It was, it was a fun one to build conceptually, and also it, it works quite well. So the idea is that it's an offensive en enchantment that uh, says, Surround your body with the power of wind for 30 seconds, and causing each storm spell you cast to increase the damage of your next storm spell by 2% and the FP cost of your next storm spell by 4%. This effect stacks multiple times for its duration. So the amount of damage increase this is capable of is kind of infinite. It's as much as you can build in 30 seconds. So it counts whenever you cast a spell. It doesn't count whenever you deal damage with a spell. So you're looking for spells that can, are spammable that you can cast very quickly in order to build it up as much as possible. But of course, the amount of FP cost is also going to ramp up very fast if you do that. So in order to make this really effective, what you're looking to do is build up as many stacks as you can and then perhaps use consumables and other items to give you FP regen, reduce FP costs, and be able to cast really very strong ramped up spells with this increased FP cost attached to them. And I, I think that the potential for a spell like this is obviously quite high, so we had to have some kind of balancing factor to increase the uh, FP cost. But still really good, still really uh, fun when used in the right circumstances. All right, up next we have Cyclone. So this is the sort of continuation of the story that we started telling when we, uh, when we made Gale Blast, which is low damage but high stagger damage. Now Cyclone actually has low damage and low stagger damage, but that's kind of not the point because it puts a tornado around you and it stays with you everywhere you go. And it lasts for quite a while. So the idea here is that even though the damage that it deals is low and the stagger damage that it deals is low, any enemy near you, it prevents their stagger bar from resetting. So basically all, sta all damage you do, all stagger damage you do, keeps building up and they never have a chance to recover. So it almost, it's like a stagger guarantee machine, right? Like the purpose of it is it guarantees that they will stagger because they're not getting that 10 second lapse requires a 10 second gap in stagger damage for something to reset their poise, right? And so this just prevents that from happening. As an uh, additional benefit, it also, any range projectiles that get shot at you while Cyclone is up will get deflected. So you don't have to worry about those. It doesn't deflect spells though, just like things like arrows. And it's just so fun to use. You know, this in tandem with maybe air attacks and gale blast, and you can sort of act like, uh, almost like a warlock because all of your damage is being dealt in little tiny increments or dots and that's just a different way to play the class without necessarily going for big damage numbers on any particular spell. Up next we have Dematerialize. So Dematerialize is a buff on the player and it's a primarily defensive but also utility buff. So let's take a look at the words. So defensive enchantment, alter the essence of your physical form into vapors causing stamina, the stamina cost of attacks to be decreased by 25% the FP cost of sorceries to be decreased by 15%, and the physical absorption to be increased by 25%. So a 25% increase to physical absorption is pretty huge. It's a great defensive thing. Obviously not very good against enemy spells, unless the spells themselves are physical. Stamina cost of all attacks, and that also includes spells. Spells count as attacks if they're consuming stamina. So this reduces all stamina cost by 25% and then also decreases the FP cost of sorcery. So it's just kind of a general all-around resource management buff, right? All four, all three bars of, re of resources will be um, managed better with this on, assuming, you know, the enemy is doing physical damage. Just all around very, very good. And it lasts for two minutes, which is not really a short duration. I think it's a quite generous duration, so. All right, up next we have Suffocate. So this is an upgraded version of Air Tax. It's another dot. And it uh, also stacks with air attacks, which is handy. It's just generally very good. It's another dot. It causes a, a debuff to the enemy's uh, damage output and makes them less capable of guarding with a shield, but is uh, just as effective. And so when you're stacking this with air attacks, then you can create situations where potentially the enemy hitting you is kind of useless, like the damage they're doing is really, really small. So just a great defensive option. So there's definitely some interesting combinations within um, Stormcaller, like the ability to stack air attacks 
with suffocate and then also have dematerialize on and it's if you're fighting a single enemy then that's just like one of the most effective damage debuffs or schemes that you could sort of create to become a tank really really good okay up next storm shatters so this is another one that is designed to break poise and not really designed to do damage as much and uh, storm shatter is basically a burst of poise damage from range not the fastest cast in the world but you can see i hit him with one breaks his shield hit him with another and then he's poise broken so we had to make this actually a little bit on the more expensive side in terms of fp because of how strong it has potential to be but this in combination with things like cyclone and things like gale blast is just it's just very very strong Okay, up next we have Tornado. So this is, we're getting now into the in-game spells, and Tornado is definitely one of the most devastating spells that, the, uh, that this class has. Now, it basically makes a giant tornado similar to Cyclone, but this one moves and will follow the enemy that you're locked onto, so it has tracking. The thing about Tornado, though, is it does a lot of damage and a lot of stagger damage, but you can only have one active at a time. They will cancel each other. But you could imagine how, at this point, with all these spells coming together, that the class can sort of create a critical mass of effects. Where they have Gale Blasts firing off, they have Cyclones up, they have Tornadoes out, they have their dots going. You can weave together one of the most effective toolkits in terms of both controlling the enemy and then also killing the enemy simultaneously. It's not the fastest damage in the world. But that doesn't really matter if you're basically completely safe the whole time. That's sort of the purpose of the class, right? Is that it's generating defense through its offense, right? It's not directly defensive. Um, and its offense is, is attrition, uh, more attrition based than like direct damage based. So it creates this really fun dynamic with the class and there's kind of nothing quite like it. I, I find it to be incredibly fun to play myself. Okay, and then we get into the two perma buffs for the class, the legendary enchantments. That's Stormcaller Sublimity, Tempest Form. So let's take a look at those. So Stormcaller Sublimity is uh, increases physical weapon damage by 15%, increases all absorption by 25%, lowers total stamina by 20%, and total FP by 40%. Removes passive FP recovery, and each melee attack restores 2 FP on hit. This buff fundamentally kind of changes one of the main rules of the uh, of the mod, which is it removing the passive FP recovery. But that's not so bad, because if you're hitting with melee weapons, then you're getting it back. So definitely more leaning toward the melee version style playthrough, but could definitely support a hybrid style playthrough, because obviously this is assuming that you do care about FP to a certain degree, um, because you're generating it back every time you hit something. But the increase to weapon damage, physical weapon damage, by 15% is quite large. It's a very strong buff. And also all absorption by 25% is also quite large. If you consider that stacked on top of something like Dematerialize, then you have a 50% reduction to physical damage in that case, and then 25% to everything else. So that's really, really strong. The loss of stamina was one we felt was necessary because no class wants to lose their stamina. No one does. Like, no player wants that. So putting that on here, we knew that the other effects of the spell needed to be quite strong. And a 15% damage buff is higher than what we would typically give on a permanent buff. And also that absorption is also very high. So just those two things are pretty much worth it. And then you're going to lose some total FP. You're going to lose like 40% of it, but that's not really game breaking. That doesn't really hurt. It just, the, the idea here is that by taking away passive recovery and by also reducing the total pool, what we wanted to create was a situation where you needed to rely on melee in order to get your FP back. If we made the, allowed the pool to be too big and then we also allowed passive FP regen, then it makes it so you don't have to rely on your melee attacks to get your FP back. So we wanted to make sure that the player was relying on that in order to manage their resource if they were casting any decent number of spells at all. And I think that that's very well accomplished here. And, you know, there's some builds that wouldn't even necessarily care about the uh, FP shenanigans going on with the spell. They just care about the damage output and the def defensive buff, in which case it totally works. Up next, we have Temp Tempest Form. The legendary enchantment increases all physical damage you deal by 10%. Increases casting speed by 70%, which, by the way, is the max amount of casting speed you can get. And it's actually not 70%, it's by 70 points. So it's, a, it's basically treating you as if you have 70 decks, um, which is the cap. 
So you could literally have minimum possible decks and nothing to increase your casting speed, and this will automatically put you at the cap. That's the purpose. Causes immunity to Rot, Poison, Frostbite, Bleed, and Death Blight. Lowers total HP by 40% and total stamina by 20%. These two downsides, the 40% HP and the 20% stamina, are very serious downsides for almost any class. They matter. But the idea here is that you no longer have to worry about any statuses. So if you're fighting a boss that's dealing a lot of statuses to you, like Moog, then they their entire strategy sort of becomes a joke. Your spellcasting is much faster, and then the damage of your spellcasting is also increased by 10%. But it doesn't just increase that. It also increases all physical damage, so it also would help hybrid builds. The interesting thing about these two permabuffs is they kind of both help hybrid builds. And they're not like purely polarized toward casting and not spell casting, which is something I actually like. It makes it a little bit more nuanced because the same character might actually choose to use Tempest Form sometimes and Stormcallers some other times, which we th found to be fun because it just adds more variety to the toolkit. But yeah, I mean, the immunity to all statuses and the casting speed increase and the incre uh, physical damage increase are all quite strong abilities. So that's why we felt that, you know, if you are playing more as a pure spellcaster and trying to stay away from things, considering how many defensive buffs that this class has, then you could actually survive pretty easily with 40% lost HP. That's not such a big deal, especially if you're trying to play this sort of kite build where you're staying away from things. So we definitely felt that this was a fair trade-off. Some, you know, some players just... They, they need they want as much HP as they can get, and so this permabuff may not be for them. But uh, for a pure caster that's trying to stay away from enemies, I think this is totally fine. Up next, we have weapons. So first off, we've got the Tempest Collar Staff, which is the Tier 2 Staff for the class, found at Storm Collar's Church in Altus. And then we also have the Blue and White Wooden Shield, which this will increase the uh, damage of Storm Sorceries by 10%, and it is now in the Armory of Stormvale Castle, just laying on the floor of the armory. So very useful for the casters. And then we have the Zephyr Blades. So the Zephyr Blades are out just outside the armory of Stormvale Castle. And it's sort of like the return of the Cellsword Twin Blades from Dark Souls 3. That's almost the same moveset. But they have been reincarnated as a storm weapon, so they're going to scale with Int and Faith. But yes, they do physical damage, and they do a lot of it. They do a lot of physical damage. They also have a pretty cool three-part weapon art. So it is L2, R2 and then L2 again. And it's a three-part combo. And yes, every time you disappear from that, you are invulnerable. You do get iframes. Um, very fun weapon. I really enjoy using it myself. Um, strong attacks. Just tons and tons of damage for this class. Honestly, one of the highest damage output weapons that we've made to the point where it might actually need to be nerfed at some point. But we kind of wanted to let people play with it first and see what they thought. <laughs> We have reworked the weapon art of the Banished Knight Halberd. It is now Storm Stance, so you go into a stance, and that's by holding L2. And then when you hit R1, you'll do the sort of retreating attack that the Banished Knights do when they, uh, when they do their, their attacks. They hit the ground, it makes a little tornado, and then you scooch backwards. So it's kind of a cool spell for being able to simultaneously like hit someone and then also dodge out of the way. Um, and then the R2 will do their twirly leaping attack so one attack will move you forward one attack will move you back giving this weapon like a lot more utility than it used to have it also does very good damage okay up next we have the uh, axe of godric we have changed the weapon art on this to be a the projectile of wind that shoots out so we had to make sure the range wasn't too much on this thing but we kind of compensated for that by making the damage quite high so one philosophy we had when we were doing these weapons is that we sort of wanted the damage output of storm weapons to be like pretty strong because their spells don't always deliver the most damage. Sometimes they're more about utility or generating staggers. So we kind of wanted the weapon art abilities to be on the stronger side to give storm a true uh, a true and solid source of damage. So we kind of placed that in the weapons themselves. Other than that, Axagodric is the same. Okay, so, the, or so right now there's only one set of armor for the class, which is the Banished Knight set, and it increases Int, Faith, Endurance, and then also increases all physical damage you deal, and all the pieces do that. So because we knew that we were only going to have one for right, right this point in the alpha before we make more armors for the class, that we needed the, the armor to actually kind of be good for any build. So that's why those stats are kind of on the more like generic 
generally good for this class side of things. Physical damage plus the appropriate stats. And then also giving it an extra endurance was a way of us taking the edge off the weight of the armor. The armor is, you know, very heavy, but when it gives you extra endurance, it makes you able to carry more as well. So that was kind of a nice touch and giving you a little bit more stamina bar. Most encounters that you'll find for this class are kind of, it, it sort of, it's, it can be a little polarizing because one of the best strengths is that they're able to generate lots of staggers. So if you ever come across enemies that can't really be staggered or you come across enemies where you can't capitalize that well off of a stagger, then they actually can struggle a bit or if they have some kind of defensive measures against staggers and those enemies do exist. And so in those situations, you will you will find the class kind of struggles. You know, it's almost like a class that does inherent bleed. If you come across a boss or an enemy that cannot be bled, then obviously you're going to struggle, right? It's the same with this with this style, is that we're almost treating the staggers like a status effect. And so that, that kind of gave us a nice focus overall. But I would say that because most enemies are very affected by staggers and by poise breaking, that this class is very strong overall because it, you know, there's definitely big chunks of the game and like, you know, big lists of enemies that just kind of get dominated by this play style. And it's one of the reasons why we had to keep the FP cost relatively high and the damage relatively low on a lot of things. Still, I think it's one of the most fun uh, classes to play even now. And so, yeah, that's the class. And yeah, it just kind of sticks to that theme of um, building poise damage and building a critical mass, especially as things get closer to you. Generally, it has a really good mix of utility, defense, and offense all kind of woven into the same toolkit. Obviously, it's not a healing style class, right? And there's not, you know, not every class should have every tool. But uh, just in terms of, like, I want to say usability and um, how fun it is, I think for me this is in probably my top three spellcasting classes. So if you guys like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time. I'll be back soon with another video. I apologize for not getting this one out earlier. I actually had to re-record this one three times total because of problems. It didn't record audio. And so, uh, yeah, here I am, third attempt. Hope this one works, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.